Okay, how you can start now? Uh, okay, so so hi, uh, all the committee members and all the participants today. So I'm sorry, uh, there is a sudden block blackout just now at the beginning of my <laughs> at the beginning of my defense, and uh, now I'm using my iPhone as a hotpot, and my I I'm using my computer uh, still using my computer, uh, but I'm not I'm not sure if the my iPhone can can hang on for, you know, hold on for, for two hours. <laughs> so maybe if uh, some, if I, uh, if I log out suddenly, then probably I, I went to uh, bring, uh, borrow some iPhone from my, from my roommate to, to continue this. Okay, so I will start the presentation today. Uh, if any time you cannot hear me, please, uh, or uh, Dr. Han or someone please send me a, a message uh, or or directly tell me th through Zoom. Okay, so here is the title for my presentation uh, for my defense. So it's uh, connect minfield games with machine learning in distributed systems. Uh, here is the outline for today's presentation. Uh, basically, I will start from the introduction First, I will give a brief introduction to game theory. Then we will talk about uh, minfield game, which is a special type of game theory. Then I will talk about very important mathematical uh, concepts behind uh, uh, minfield game. Then I will talk about my overall learning timeline of my PhD study. In general, today I will talk about three of my representative work They represent my uh, study in minfield games or uh, across my PhD study, so at different periods. Then finally, I will draw a conclusion and talk about uh, about my future work. So uh, here, I I want to give a brief introduction to game theory. So when we talk about game theory, I think the first word come to our mind is game. Like when we talk about game, we will talk about, we usually think about a uh, video game, chess game or basketball game. Actually all these games share a common characteristics. Like they are a decision-making process for multiple players. And uh, in fact, there are more scenarios than this, you know, in the Congress or say uh, in the stock market is also a decision-making process of, of many players. So when we talk about theory, it actually refers to, I think, to the modeling. So in general, game theory can be considered as a, a study of, you know, modeling of the decision-making process of multiple players. So in to give you a more clear idea, I want to uh, talk about a very uh, simple two-player decision-making uh, which is called prisoner's dilemma. So let's talk, let's say there are two prisoners. One is called Jerry, one is called Kevin. And both of them have two strategies. Uh, one is uh, stay silent, they say nothing. The other is Beatrice. Beatrice means confess that the other one has, has a certain, uh, the other one is uh, like confess that the other one had, is, is guilty. So, uh, uh, for this uh, simple two-player game, then it has, uh, I showed the payoff matrix uh, in the right. So as you can see, uh, if both of them stay silent, then they will be put into jail for one year. And uh, if one Beatrice, one stays silent, then the one stays silent will be put into jail for three years and the other one will be uh, set free. And uh, if both of them betrays, then both of them will be put into jail for for two years. And obviously, from our obse observation, we can see that both of them stay silent is uh, is the best strategy for 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 these two prisoners. So, however, this state is not stable. Like because either one of them can switch can switch their strategy and get off better payoff. So, so 
the Nash equilibrium point for this game is is both of them Beatrice because in this case no one can increase their reward by only change his strategy uh, with the, if the other one didn't change the strategy. So in this case, uh, this is the uh, equilibrium point and uh, we call this game a glimmer because, because obviously we have a better solution, but we cannot choose. So this is uh, why we call the uh, prisoner's dilemma. Uh, uh, so here, sorry. Uh, so here, Minfield, I want to talk about introduce Minfield game in the real world. So Minfield game, uh, is compared with traditional games is uh it it actually is the decision making of a large number of players so the major difference is between the uh between between midfield game and traditional game is is the number of players uh so in real in our daily life there are uh there are several there are several uh scenarios that we can uh that we can uh, we can observe and uh, they they are kindly like uh this shows the characteristic of midfield games so for example i show you here uh there are two a group of reef fish swimming like a hurricane and also the ship running in fear of a drone so now i want to talk about give more clear introduction to MIFIO games. So let's have a brief uh, definition. Uh, maybe there are many different versions, but I think this one should be acceptable for most researchers. Like MIFIO game is a game theoretic framework, studies the decision-making by small interacting players in a very large number of, uh, you know, very large populations. And generally this kind of behavior are described by two equations. One is called Ham hamilton jacobian bellman equation. The other one is called Broca-Blanc-Kolmogorov equation. And the, uh, the function of uh, HJB equation is to find the optimal control for each player. And the FPK is used to describe the evolution of mean field. And there are major three, three characteristics of uh, the players in mean field games. First, they are indistinguishable means players share a common structures of the model like in the of uh, take the ship uh, a group of sheep as an example both of the all the ships are afraid of the drone so they will run away from the run away from the drone so this is what we call a common structure if one ship uh become if one ship is not afraid or say several ships are not afraid of the drone then the, the players uh, cannot be said to be indis indistinguishable. And then second character is rationality, like the players act optimally. Uh, so they either try to maximize the utility or say sometimes to minimize the cost. Uh, the last one is heterogeneity, like players can have heterogeneous states, but they also take the shape, uh, shape example, uh, we, the ships, uh, are on different locations. So now I can give um, the introduce the midfield game from an optimal control perspective. So in our traditional optimization problems, we try to minimize our cost. Uh, in game theory, there are multiple players. So each player will have their own strategy and try to minimize their own cost. So optimal control problems uh besides the cost function we also have a constraint a differential constraint which is uh which describes the transition of the state so in differential game uh it's a, i think is a corresponding part of the optimal optimal control problems in the game theory field so it's actually has is the optimal control problem for for uh multiple different players and mean field game, what mean field game do is it generally can reduce the differential game for a large number of players to a thing 
to an optimal control problem for a reference player with the mean field information. And this can reduce the computational complexity significantly. And th I think this is a major uh, motivation for mean field games. Uh, so uh, as I told, as I said before, so mean field game, the, the behavior of the players in mean field games can generally be described by two partial differential equations. One is called Hamilton Jacobian Bellman equation. The other, the other one is Fogel Planck equation. So uh, when in general, when we solve, when we try to solve a mean field game, we will have these two phases in our iteration. So for the phase one, which, uh, which is HJB equation, we try to find the best control. So for also take the sh a group of shape as an example, uh, we try to find the, the next, we try to find the next location. We try to find the, uh, the best speed or say the next lo location for the shape so that it can get away from the, from the drone. Then when all the shape make their decisions, then the, a group of shape will move to a new state. And this is described by the FAK equation. When, when all the players or say the ship reach a new location, which then we need to make a, a new decision or game based on the current distribution. And this two process will, will happen iteratively and finally we will get a solution to, to the mean field games. So this is my overall learning timeline. Uh, I started to working on mean field game in 2018. And my first work is on a uh, mean field game on graph or say is a discrete for Planck equation, which is phase one. And uh, I use that to re solve some resource allocation problem in mobile edge computing. Then in 2020, 2019, I tried to working on mean field games in continuous time and continuous state space. So this contains two phases, which I mentioned just now. And this is used to solve a velocity control problem for UAVs. So during the outbreak of, of COVID-19 in 2020, I want to make some contributions to the, uh, to the epidemic, epidemic transmission modeling. And uh, uh, what I do is use desgrave focal planck equation to model uh, the evolution of COVID-19. In 2021 and after that, most of my works are focusing on the connection between uh, mean field games and uh, machine learning. So I, tr I try to optimize traditional uh, machine learning framework or say uh, try to use machine learning to solve some uh, challenges in mean field games. So one, one work is, is in 2021, I try to use scan to solve a high dimensional mean field games and use that to modeling the opinion evolution in social networks. And, and later on, I also do the combination between neural architecture search with mean field game, also federated learning with mean field games. Okay, so I think, I hope uh, in the introduction part, I give, a, give you a very uh, general idea about mean field games. Now let's take a look on how we can apply that to real world to some you know engineering problems. So this is my first work. I use mean field game as uh, to solve resource allocation problem in multi-axis edge computing. And uh, basically for the motivation of this work, I need to answer three questions. Why the first one is why I can why I consider a multi-access edge computing. So in traditional mobile edge computing, it cannot satisfy 5G requirements, which is high quality of services and low latency. Uh, and the major reason is, you know, the distance between the cloud, central cloud server and the, uh, and the edge user is usually is relatively far. So it has a transmission delay. Then the, there might be some, traffic in a centralized cloud server. And uh, in multi-axis edge computing, it has three characteristics. One is on-premise. On-premise refers to uh, that, re refers that like 
uh, in multi access edge computing, we can uh, process the jobs in a local miner. And proximity means uh, the edge server is usually very close, is, is relatively close to the edge users. So it will have a smaller transmission delay. Then the first two characters result in the third character of multi access edge computing, which is low latency. So why we consider a dense user case? Because uh, the number of mobile terminals is growing exponentially. Uh, we will finally came to the era of internet of things. And, uh, and uh, in this case, you know, uh, the density of the mo mobile terminals will be much higher than the uh, edge servers. So why we consider mean field games? Because in Mean field game uh, is are, is extremely good at uh, solving this kind of problems involving a large number of players with a very low com computational complexity. However, traditional games the traditional games they usually have a high computational complexity because they usually deal with the interactions of the players separately. So here is the overall system re review. Uh, so we have uh, edge servers and mobile users, and uh, we need to define a response time of the server uh, given on um, given it, the service rate and the workload on the on the servers. Then the total expected response time is the average uh, is a weighted average of all the response time from different servers because uh, because a user will distribute its jobs on all the servers. So, uh, so the overall response time is the expected uh, response time from all the servers. And we also consider some random noise and we use a Shano entropy to, uh, to quantify that. And uh, so here I make a, I summarize the, uh, resource allocation optimization problem in M in multi-access edge computing systems. Uh, so our target is to minimize the total expected response time by adjusting the distribution of jobs on the servers. And then uh, our strategy is the user distribution on the servers or say their jobs distribution on the servers, which is a mixed strategy on a discrete, discrete strategy set. And so the so the sum of this uh, different components of this vector should be equal to one, and we also have a stability requirements. That is, the serving capacity of each server should be larger than the total load. So what? How can we model the MEC system with mean field game on graph? So basically, we regard all the different servers as. Uh, regard the servers as the nodes. And if the two servers can communicate with each other, then we say there is an edge between them. So for example, in this case, we have a node I, which is a server I, then its neighbor is server J. They can communicate each other, so there is an edge between them. And uh, we also define a notation as neighborhood, which is a, a state of all the, uh, all is, uh, not eyes neighbors. Then we have a population state space, which contain all possible uh, jobs distribution on all the servers. So what do we do? How can we do this load balance problem or say resource allocation problem? Uh, we use the discrete focal plank equation. And uh, I want to give uh, some introduction to the notations of the in this equation, because it looks a little bit complex. Uh, so the neighbor, the first one is the neighborhood of node i. And uh, then this part is the degree of node j, which is the number of the neighbors in the neighborhood of node j. And then we have some pale functions. And the pale function is defined to uh, quantify like how much can you reduce the response time or how much can you increase the risk of response time if I adjust the load distribution 
on the on the servers. Then we have a Shannon Boltzmann entropy. Then this part is a function to give uh to uh to give us a value if the value is better is bigger than zero, then it will stay unchanged. Then if it's less than zero, it give a value uh zero. So as you can see, this function describes the change of the load of the workload or say the jobs on a on a certain server at a given time slot. And some part of this is determined by the shape of the graph, which is how the uh, edge server network looks like. So now I want to give a, a numerical toy example for the load distribution how we adjust the load. So as you can say, we assign uh, too much load to the second server and we uh, assign too less load to the sixth server. And this is a major reason why, why, why the response time, overall response time of the system is slow because we wasted some resources on some uh, servers and we, uh, and we uh, also, and there is too much con congestion in another servers. So what do we do is we will update this kind of uh, load distribution. Uh, for example, we can allocate some of the uh, heavy load servers, remove some of the workload from the heavy load servers, and uh, move that to its neighbors, and we can. We can add more workload to the uh, light load servers. And uh, so in this case, we will uh, decrease the overall response time of the systems. Then how to update the load distribution with our discrete Fourier planck equation, or we call that mean field evolutionary dynamics. We, uh, we need to compute a gradient matrix. So what we do is that we regard all this as a variable uh, and this will become a, a vector. And then we will compute the corresponding coefficient and store that in a matrix. And then this becomes a linear equation. So this, uh, we will compute the uh, change of the workload uh, with this uh, gradient matrix. So, here is, uh, I show you a toy example how we compute the uh, uh, gradient matrix. Uh, for example, we have uh, four nodes in the right, in the graph shown in the right. So what do we do is that there are two parts of the uh, gradient flow, which is one is inflow into a node, the other is outflow out of uh, the, the node. So first we compute the inflow from, from the neighbors and this is majorly by compute by compute the difference between the potential of of different nodes. So uh, the physical meaning is that if I assign more jobs to node two, how much can we reduce the can we reduce reduce the uh, response time? So that is uh, the the potential of uh, node two to re reduce the response time. So we compare this between different nodes and uh, we will adjust uh, we will adjust the adjust the workload based on the proportional to the difference between their potentials. And uh, after computing all this, we will assign this to the corresponding entries of uh, gradient matrix. Then we will uh, we will we will derive the, uh, we will get the uh, update of the jobs of the load distribution. So in particular, uh, in iteration K, we will update user strategies simultaneous. First, we will record the old strategy profile. Then we use that to compute the gradient matrix and update the strategy profile. And finally, uh, if the, difference between the old strategy profile and the new strategy profile is less than three short, we will stop the updating. So how to evaluate the performance? We have three performance indi indicators. One is the individual response time of the users. 
then is the average response time, then is the fairness index. So uh, in particular, the fairness index refers to the equality of the users. Do we reduce the uh, response time of one user and then increase the response time of the other users? Then the last one is uh, I show you some results. So does mean field game, uh, does uh, the, the proposed algorithm balance the load on the servers? We do an experiment on this. So for example, we have 10 servers in this case. And at the beginning, there are too much load on server five and too less load on server four. So this is the reason why at the beginning, the, uh, why at the beginning, the, uh, uh, the, the response time of the system is a little bit slow. Part of the is assigned to other servers, such as server four. In this case, uh, the workload is is much more balanced. Then uh, we will, then we uh, we can reduce the overall response time. Uh, so how mean field evolutionary dynamic compare with other methods? So uh, we can. Uh, we compare mean field games with two other uh, uh, algorithms. One is called uh, a proportional uh, scheme, which is very naive. We just assign the job proportional to server's computing capacity. The other one is called global optimal scheme, where we assign more jobs to the servers with high computing capacity. And this one is proved to be centralized and global optimal. So compared with them, mean field game is a near optimal solution and can achieve faster uh, convergence speed. So now I'm going to introduce my second work uh, where we use mean field games to solve uh, energy, to, to de develop an energy efficient velocity control algorithm for a massive number of UAVs. So here is the background for this work. Uh, so we consider our scenario when the terrestrial wireless communication system is highly affected and the emergency communication is needed for search and rescue. So we want to use a, a on-demand UAV related network to, to, to provide this kind of services. Uh, the advantage is they are faster to deploy and flexible to reconfigure and also they can provide line of sight, line of sight links. And the major disadvantage of the UAVs is that they have very limited onboard battery. And uh, so this reads the need of an energy efficient velocity algorithm. So we can help the UAVs to provide better services with a longer time. Uh, so why we consider mean field games? Still mean field games are extremely good for a scenario with uh, a large number of indistinguishable, indistinguishable players. So in this case, we have a large number of uh, UAVs and also the interaction between agents. Uh, we can regard that as a mean field game to reduce the uh, computational complexity. So this makes the mean field game algorithm uh, rather scalable. So here is the uh, system model. So basically we consider a case where the UAVs, a group of UAVs starting from one initial location, uh, which is described by a, a pro density, probability density function and fly into the target distribution. And the wind can affect this uh, velocity of UAVs and wind is regarded as a random noise. So in the location dynamics, we use a standard winner process to uh, to quantify this noise. And uh, in general, the location dynamics is the Newtonian motion. And uh, so we have a cost function. There are th three different components in this cost functions. One is the kinetic energy. We use this to approximate the overall energy consumption of the UAVs. Uh, and uh, we use kinetic energy because it has a very good quadratic property. Uh, and also it's a common practice in many related works. And uh, we also have has an obstacle 
avoidance cost. When the UAVs get very close to uh, obstacle, then we will we we will uh, implement a high cost so that the UAVs can avoid the collision. And finally, which is our target, when the UAVs reach reach the target location, we need to provide some kind of uh, wireless uh, wireless services. And uh, this is the total. Uh, the, the average cha uh, the channel capacity at the target location. And uh, we have the, so when we, we now transform this to a mean field game, so what we do is that instead of con consider each player, we consider a reference player, which is the average performance of all the players. So we, we use the prob probability distribution function of the UAVs locations to compute the average of all the players. Then we have a mean field game formulation. So uh, the, what do we do? We do a change of variable. And uh, this is for the simplicity of contribution in the later stage, where we define a momentum, which is the product of the probability density and the velocity of the UAVs. Then we have a differential constraint which is uh, we transform the trans transform the Newtonian motion dynamics, which is a state transition function to the Foucault-Planck equation with the uh, with the density function. Then finally, we have a boundary. Sorry, we have a boundary condition, which is the initial uh, distribution of the UVs. So what do we do is we first find the Lagrangian dual problem of the original problems. So what do we do is we have a Lagrangian multiplier and then we regard Foucault-Planck equation as an equality constraint. Then the dual problem is uh, is given here. So it's a side of point problem. So what do we do is we use a proximal dual hybrid gradient to, to solve this uh, mean field games. We iteratively, iteratively solving three iterations as follows. So as you can see, we have some regularization terms here and the uh, tau and sigma are two are step sizes of this regularization terms. And we will solve this three iterations, which is basically do uh, derivatives with respect to the three variables while, while keep the other variables fixed. So for the first iteration, we compute the derivatives of the Lagrangian with, uh, with respect to rho. And then with, with some kind of der derivation, we will get a third order polynomial. So we, we will use Newton's method to find the root of this polynomial. So for Newton's method, uh, I give a, a very general idea here. Suppose we have a polynomial. The so Newton's method is we will first initialize a random root then uh, this part will compute uh, is actually the, dif the distance between the new root and the old root as shown on this coordinate. So when we update the root through this formula, uh, the, we will get closer and closer to the real root and this distance will become smaller and smaller and finally converge. So we will get the root to this polynomial. So, here is some simulation results. Uh, first, we need to confirm that the problem is indeed solved because there are you know, too, many, too, too much parameters in these problems. So what do we do is uh, the convergence, we check the convergence of HJB and FPK residual arrows, which shows that the problem is success, successfully solved. And here also I show the a small experiment on how we control a group of UAVs. So the swarm of UAVs are flying through a neural tunnel. Uh, sorry. Uh, so the different, the colors represents the density of the UAVs in, in that certain area and the black rectangle represents the obstacles. So as you can see, the UAVs are flying from left to right. Uh, and can cross uh, the cross uh, obstacles. So 
In... Actually, I'm sorry. Do you mind playing that video one more time? Yes. Yes. Or actually, maybe a couple more times. Yes. Okay. All right. No. Uh, thanks. Okay. So finally, I will introduce my third work, which is so after studying the discrete focal Planck equation and the continuous of uh, continuous mean field games in and I started to connect my work with uh, um, different machine learning techniques. And this one is a representative of my of my work, which is uh, connect connect mean field games and machine learning. So, uh, so I use mean field games. Uh, I use scan to solve high dimensional mean field games and apply that to model the opinion diffusion in social networks. So here is the introduction to social networks. Uh, basically, uh, we also uh, we talk about a very interesting phenomenon in our daily life. Uh, so when we came to a party and we meet someone, we will have a nice conversation and uh, some common, some very common conversation is uh, if do you know somebody and say you find that you guys share a common friends and this at this time you will say, oh, what a small word. So this is called the small word phenomenon uh, in in the field of social networks. So social networks are sets or groups of people or group of people with some patterns of contacts or interactions between them. So why we consider to use mean field games to model the uh, evolution of opinions in social networks? Basically, there are a very large number of on online social network users, such as uh, such as you know, you know, we have many different social media such as Facebook. Which are linking in Twitter, uh, which is very good for mean field games, and uh, also we have a natural opinion, the natural uh, differential constraint, which is opinion dynamics, and then we have uh, the influence of other users' opinion. Our generic user can be easily transformed to a, into a mean field. So here's the. Uh, uh, system model so the social network is also described by a graph so each each social network users are described by uh are regarded as a vertex or say a node on this graph and if if two of them are are friends then they can have a direct connection and uh, we have a binary indicator to indicate to indicate whether they are connect or not and uh, each of them has a state variable, which is their opinion. So, uh, so it's a uh, usually the the vector which represents the opinion is uh, very large because one person can have opinion towards many different social issues. So here is the opinion dynamics. So the new opinion for non-stubborn user is uh, defined in this equation. Uh, basically is the uh, average opinion of his neighbors and also the uh, his own efforts, whether he wants to change. Then the new opinion for stubborn users is always uh, is a little bit different where uh, he or she always consider his always consider his current opinion. So that is what we say stubborn. So, the optimization targets for all the social network users is they want they want to minimize their own control effort as well as the distance to their target opinions. So their control efforts is also uh, computed as a quadratic function to the control variable. So we have two constants here, and uh, here x zero is the target opinion, and then this. This is the final opinion of user I. It tries to minimize the different the distance between the uh, target opinion and uh, his final opinion, so that the group of social network social network users can reach can reach an agreement. So in total, in general, this works. Uh, this cost function is defined to to show uh, to show our target as 
big, we want to minim minimize the control efforts for the social network users and uh, reach an agreement on certain target opinion. So the optimal control problem for generic user is given here. So we have a running cost, which is compute as their total uh, total uh, efforts, and the terminal cost is the and the terminal cost is the uh, the, the the distance between his uh, final opinion to the target opinion, and the control efforts are implemented through a certain time period, and this one is normalized for the simplicity of computation. And we have a state transition dynamic of the opinions, which is uh, we have a stubbornness defined here. Uh, so the or connection indicator and also the current opinion of user I. So this is general uh, state transition dynamics for both stubborn and non-stubborn users uh, with, uh, with an adjustment of the stubbornness between zero and one. So uh, this is a high dimensional mean field games. When the number of social network, social network users grow large, instead of minimizing the cost function nail for each of them, we focus on the, uh, their average cost. So the cost of the mean field game gonna be, so we have a probab prob probability of users' opinions, and then we compute average efforts and also the average distance of all the users. Then we have a, the state transition dynamic will become, uh, we drop the index because right now we didn't consider a, a generic user. We consider the R, a reference player, which is, has the average performance of all the users. Then we have a diffusion factor, uh, which, uh, which is the strength of the random noise. And this is also a standard winner process which quantify the influence on the uh, on the state variable, uh, given some you know, uh, which is uh, represents some random noise from some random social issues. And then finally, uh, we we will represent the state transition dynamics in terms of the probability density function, and we will obtain the Fourier-Planck equation. And as you can see, this is the state transition function as shown in the uh, state transition dynamics. So here is a summer, we summarize the high dimensional mean field games. It's actually very similar to the uh, mean field games in the second work. However, in this case, we the dimension of the state variable is very high. So, uh, so we have uh, the average cumulative cost then we have a Fourier Planck equation as the constraint. Then finally, we have a initial distribution of opinion of the user's opinions as the boundary condition. So why we need to develop a, a, a machine learning based method in, and not use a numerical methods? So because the major reason is the curse of dimensionality. So, uh, uh, we have, so in general, for numerical method, we compute the uh, derivative with finite difference. So basically, we use finite difference to approximate the derivatives, and we need to find a smart, small interval. And actually, the the we to to compute this uh, derivatives. So what the first step to do is always do the space and time discretization. So basically we uh, divided the uh, the different dimensions into many intervals. And uh, as you can see, the number of derivatives that need to be uh, approximated are equal to this equation. And, uh, uh, and this number will grow exponentially with respect to the number of the dimensions. So that is why we have a uh, uh, curse of dimensionality. So how, so we we use a generative adversary network based approach to solve these high dimensional problems. So why we consider that? Uh, so I want to give you a 
introduction to GAN first. So there are two neural networks in GAN. One is called generator, the other one is called discriminator. So in the discriminator will be trained with uh, some real samples. And uh, so it can, and the generator will generate some fake samples. So the generator, the discriminator can tell the generator whether uh, the samples you generated is, is fake or, or real. So, and the, the generator will keep improving based on the response of the discriminator and gradually it can, it can imitate the distribution of the real samples and generate some samples that cannot be uh, recognized by the discriminator. So in this case, the, the GAN will converge. And uh, so basically GAN solve a minimax, two player minimax problems and uh, is, is uh, cost function is given as below. So mean, mean field games uh, is an optimal, uh, as an optimal control problems as we just showed you. So what it, there are some uh, running costs and also terminal costs. We have the Fergus Planck equation as a differential constraint. We also have an initial country, uh, condition. So uh, with some, uh, with the legendary transform, just like when we, in the second work, we do, we find the due problems of this uh, original problems. So what do we do is we put the differential constraint into the target, uh, into the target, into the cost function with a Lagrangian multiplier. And we got a similar uh, minimax problems as, uh, as again, the cost function of GAN. So, uh, uh, here I saw some simulation results for the third work. Uh, basically, we simulate the opinion evolution of 100 uh, different users, and each point re represents the different users' opinions. We only show the first two dimensions, and uh, uh, so eight different colors represents the times. Uh, so, uh, and we also have a coefficient to represent the effect of random social issues. And uh, as you can see, the they can finally reach an agreement at the target times. And we can solve this kind of high dimensional mean field games up to 100 dimensions. So finally, I will draw a conclusion and talk about my future work. So in this, in today's presentation, I introduced mean field games which is study, which studies the decision making by small interacting players in a very large number of pub, populations. Then by reducing the differential game for a large number of players to an optimal control problem for a single player, mean field game can significantly reduce the computational complexity. And uh, in the first work, uh, we talk about a uh, discrete Fulker Planck equation, which, which is also called mean field game on graph. And uh, for a specific user case, uh, load balance in multi-axis edge computing. So we improved the overall performance uh, based on three performance indicators. And uh, also uh, we prov provide a very efficient, uh, efficient uh, uh, approach to balance the load uh, based on discrete Fulker Planck equation. And my second work, I working on continuous mean field games, which where we develop energy efficient velocity control algorithm for massive number of UAVs. And uh, so we also provide a numerical solution to uh, the proposed uh, mean field games. And uh, this is majorly focused on low dimensional mean field games. Then in my third work, I try to connect mean field game with GAN and uh, is, is focused on high dimensional mean field games. And the proposed game based approach can solve mean field game up to 100 dimensions. And you can also model the opinion diffusion of stubborn and non-stubborn users. So in my future work, I will continuously working on mean field game for swarm robotics. So as you can see in my previous work, I ignore some, um, some, uh, in inter collisions between the UAVs, 
which is a microscopic effects between different players. So in the future, I will try to capture this microscopic effects between different agents without without introducing too much uh, no linearity to the model. Then also we I will try to develop some quantitative uh, error analysis on the mean field game approximation uh, because in for mean field game it is very ideal. It needs actually needs a number of UV the number of players to reach in to reach infinity. So as uh, in real life, the players is usually limited. The number of players is usually very limited. So we need to develop a quantitative error analysis. Then finally, uh, I will also try to develop some deep reinforcement learning best approach to solve mean field games. Uh, so this can be connect with a, a fixed point approach where we alternate the response response with a fixed uh, uh, mean field distribution. So also we can give some, we hope that after training the deep, deep reinforcement learn, learning model, we can give real-time estimation on the state distribution and the is there variation. Then finally, we have a, uh, machine learning techniques for renewable uh, energy generation integration. So I have uh, several works focusing on different machine learning techniques, and I want to use them to solve some uh, energy problems. So for example, forecasting the renewable energy generation and also optimize power plant configuration, location, and size, and finally, uh, is some uh, making some decisions on renewable energy operation management. So this is my, all my uh, publications during my PhD study, and uh, uh, I think yeah, that's all for for today's presentation. And thanks all for listening.